The dark base 700 from Be Quiet features a tempered glass side panel, front panel USB 3.1 Type-C, and a reversible motherboard tray for a complete custom look. Extensive water cooling support and cable management make this a great case for your next silent build. Click the link in the description below for more info. What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Hope you're all doing well. So we are currently at the tail end of our holiday season here in the US, which means about a month ago, vendors started sending us reviewers care packages and Christmas gifts filled with cookies and candies and warm fuzzy cards. This was all an attempt, of course, to buy us off for positive reviews and to inevitably become their corporate shills. And this is how it works in the real world in case you didn't know, guys. All of my reviews of a company's product are determined by how good their Christmas gift was the year prior. But of of course, this is a small detail that doesn't warrant any further discussion. Anyway, when a large package from Corsair showed up on our doorstep unannounced, our first thought was, what kind of cookies did they get us this year? Are we sticking with Chips Ahoy? Did they upgrade us to Oreos? Dare I say Nutter Butter, that would be a Christmas miracle. But no, what they sent us instead was far cooler. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the K70 RGB SE Rapid Fire. Now this is basically the same rapid fire keyboard that launched last year, but with a few aesthetic changes. For one, we have white keycaps and a silver aluminum frame. I have never seen this keyboard before in my life until now. I looked on Amazon and Newegg, both in the US, Euro, and Canadian websites, and I did not find any trace of this exact model. Upon further inspection, however, I did notice that there was some Chinese writing right on the retail box, which cues me in to believe that this is not available in any of those countries, but rather way far east overseas in Asia. So this is a fairly special product. And since I've never given a proper review of the black K70 rapid fire that launched last year, I figured I would take a closer look at this one right now. Does that work for you? Good. I don't want to get so angry. There's nothing to be angry about. All right, let's crack this baby open. Let's see what she's made of. I'm gonna tear him a new one. Woo wee! Oh, look at that. Ooh, that is nice. I like it in white. I really do. I think the white looks spectacular. Uh, of course, I like the black one just as good. Black's just, just equal. They're equal. Taking it out of the box, we've got a large braided ca- Oh, sorry, I hit the mic there. Holy moly. I'm all over the place. Put yourself together, Kyle. Go home. You're drunk. Get your plastic wrap off. Be free! Go now, run! Well, here she is, laid out, spread eagle and all. And holy moly, these keycaps are sexy. I believe these are double shot PBT, uh, thick walls. Thick walls, man, these are thicker than even the K95 RGB Platinum, which is Corsair's flagship model, uh, far more expensive than the equivalent K70 uh, rapid fire in the US, but yet these keycaps are much sturdier. That is legitties. The ledgers are nice and big, very easy to read. Whether or not you like the actual font that they've used is gonna depend largely on your personal tastes. I don't mind it. I do wish, however, that they hadn't sandwiched or squeezed in the special characters into the same row as their primary characters. I'd rather see them utilize the empty space on the keycap for those symbols, like they do with the K95 RGB Platinum. I think it just looks a little bit cleaner, less cluttered, and a bit more legible as well. But of course, this is a minor gripe. The other benefit to having large ledgers is that you allow a lot of backlight to bleed through. And of course we have per key RGB lighting across the entire board, which is fantastic. That's all configurable within the Q software along with any macros or key reassignments that you can possibly imagine. The Q software has gotten a lot better over the years. There's still some quirks to it, but it's definitely a lot more intuitive than it used to be when it first came out. But let's not detract from the real star of the show. That would be a dick move. Of course, I'm talking about the genuine Cherry Mix speed switches with a linear travel, 45 gram actuation force, and 1.2 millimeter actuation point, which means that you only have to depress the key 1.2 millimeters before it registers a keystroke. That last spec in particular is what makes these switches the fastest ones available on the market. The only ones that could match it, as far as I know, are the Razer yellow switches, which also have the same 1.2 millimeter actuation point. Now, most of the other popular mechanical switches out there have an actuation point of around two millimeters, which may take a fraction of a second longer to register than the switches we have here. But when you're in the grips of an intense firefight, a few milliseconds could mean the difference between life or death, which is why a lot of gamers gravitate towards these MX speed switches for that slight but sometimes significant competitive edge. 
Other bells and whistles on the rapid fire include 100% anti-ghosting and full NP rollover, so you can literally mash down on every single key at once, and every keystroke will be successfully registered without a hitch. We got a lot going on in the top right corner of the keyboard, including a four-step LED brightness button. You can go off, low, medium, or high. Next to that is your Windows key lock button so you don't accidentally bring yourself out of game. We have some LED indicators for things like caps lock, num lock, and your multimedia keys with a very nice, solid feeling volume scroll wheel. Moving on to the back here, we get a USB 2.0 pass-through port. I think it's about time that we see USB 3 on a future revision uh, keyboard from Corsair, just saying. And then we also have a polling rate switch, so you can choose between 1, 2, 4, and 8 milliseconds for your polling rate. If you switch it to the far right, that enables BIOS compatibility mode, so you can ensure this keyboard will work within the UEFI. Here we get a super thick braided cable that looks to be about 6 or 7 feet. That terminates to two USB type A ports, one for your keyboard, the other for that USB 2.0. 2.0 pass-through. Moving on to the bottom. Ah yes, we have what looks to be four small rubber feet so you don't slip and slide around while you're typing, and four fold-out feet if you wanted to put this guy on an incline just to elevate it a little bit, makes it a bit more ergonomic for some folks when typing. However, these fold-out feet do not have any rubber feeties on them. There are no rubber boots, so this is gonna be sliding around like crazy uh, unless you fold these feet inward. That's kind of a shame, because I do like that incline. But uh, that's pretty much it. I think we covered all that really quickly. Super efficient, this review. Um, as far as pricing, as I mentioned before, I don't know how much this costs in China or wherever the hell they sell it. Um, all I know is that it retails for 120 bucks on Amazon currently here in the United States. The picture on Amazon also reminded me that the US version comes with a wrist rest, whereas this one does not. I mean, how spoiled are we? You give an American a $120 keyboard, what's his response? But my wrist hurts, it really hurts. I want your wrist rest, I want your wrist rest. Anyway, cool keyboard. Honestly, it puts a pretty sweet spin on an already great product, so I'm 100% for it. Additionally, I'll say if you're planning to use a keyboard with white keycaps, just be aware that you're gonna get it dirty real quick. At the same time, using a keyboard like this one in a country where you're technically not supposed to, kinda makes it all worth it. But that's all I got for now, guys. So if you enjoyed this video, feel free to toss me a like before you go. It helps me a lot. And also subscribe to the channel for more tech stuff coming at you really soon. Additionally, if you'd like to see videos like this up to a week early without ads, you can check me out on Floatplane. I will leave a link in the description below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, have a good one, and I will see y'all in the next video.